Hello, my name is Kamila Kokotka-Nikuła from Gdańsk University of Technology in Poland. And I am Mira Bauzuk from the University of Groningen in the Netherlands. We are members of the European Network of Open Education Librarians, NOL. Welcome to the fifth episode of our series dedicated to the UNESCO recommendation on open educational resources, OER. This episode is one of the five OE bytes. Each byte is dedicated to one of the five action areas of the UNESCO recommendation. We will keep them short and digestible, a delicious bite of open education for you. Today, we're going to explore the second area of action addressed by the recommendation, namely the one on developing supportive policy. Having an open education policy in place leads to the creation, increased use, and support for improving OER. But what does UNESCO mean by this? Through this action area, UNESCO recommends that the member states develop or encourage policy environments, including those at the institutional and national levels that are supportive of effective OER practices. In other words, national governments, education authorities and institutions are encouraged to adapt new regulatory frameworks in this area and embed OE policies into broader national policy frameworks and strategies. Specifically, these policies and practices should support the open licensing and standardized sharing of publicly funded educational and research materials. UNESCO also encourages the development of policy frameworks that stimulate the creation, access, reuse, repurpose, adaptation, and redistribution of OER. These strategies should also help develop and streamline a quality assurance mechanism for OER and support relevant research on OER. Another important recommendation is to promote the professional development of teachers using OER and proper recognition of OER creation as professional merit. National governments and other stakeholders are also encouraged to harness the potential of OER and include it in transforming education and reforming curricula and all forms of learning. The overarching goal of these changes is to enable and foster high quality, inclusive education and lifelong, lifelong learning for all, supported by relevant research in the area. So what is the situation with the OE policies in European higher education institutions? To answer this and some of the following questions, we once again turn to the Spark Europe 2021 report, Open Education in European Libraries of Higher Education. According to the report, half of the libraries surveyed state that their institution already has a kind of open education policy, that they are in the process of developing one or that one is under consideration. The types of institutional policies they refer to encompass institutional regulations, strategies, roadmaps, and plans, some of which are under development. This number is still relatively low compared to the number of such institutions across Europe. In general, open education is addressed more as part of overarching policies than standalone policies dedicated to OE, OER. When it comes to the national level, still relatively few countries have policies that address OER in one form or another. That is often as part of uh, an overarching educational policy. Countries with some type of national policies, as reported by the survey respondents, include Croatia, Finland, the Netherlands, Poland, Portugal, Slovenia, Spain, Switzerland, and the UK. But what role do libraries play in the development of OER supportive policies? The 2021 survey report shows that libraries are becoming more involved in open education policies, with twice as many involved in the conception of OER policies and slightly more involved in the, uh, in the participation in open education policies since the 2020 survey. This increase could be explained by the fact that more libraries could be engaging in open education policy making as they did with open access or open science, also since open education librarians report working together with open science units. The increased uptake of the UNESCO OER recommendation and the crucial role of academic libraries during the COVID-19 closures could also explain more involvement of the libraries in the OER policy making. In 2021, of the 27 institutions that have op open education policies in place, 
22 indicate a library involvement in the conception of the OER policy. This developed show that librarians are part of the uh, OER conversation and action, and that can uh, be partners in collaborative OER programs and policies at an institutional level. This is also thanks to their direct knowledge and experience in finding, reusing, creating, and adapting OER. The lack of supportive uh, institutional policies is considered to be one of the major challenges the European academic libraries face in supporting open education. So what can your library and you as a librarian do to help develop such supportive policies? First of all, you can help initiate and develop standalone or overarching OE policies, drawing on good policy examples and practical policymaking experience from peers. To start somewhere, we encourage you to get familiar with already existing national and institutional OE policies in several European countries, as listed in the 2021 Spark Europe report. The UNESCO recommendation on OER, endorsed and adopted by over 190 member states, is in itself an excellent policy example to build on. It is the first international normative instrument to embrace the field of open materials and technologies in education. Moreover, the recommendation is a fundamental policy framework reflecting the joint opinion of the international community and providing national governments and institutions with guidance on OER policies and practices. Keep in mind that any new institutional and national OE policies should be aligned with existing strategies for open access, open science, and open software, if already in place. Get familiar with them and note potential areas of intersection. Use the experience and expertise of other open science units that might be further along the way in setting up their respective institutional policies. For example, many higher education organizations already have an institutional open access policy in place, which might be a source of valuable information about the policymaking journey at your institution. Be open to cooperation and partnerships with other institutional departments active in the policymaking area. Initiate conversation with these partners about the importance of the topic of open education and its connections to open science. If you need inspiration to help to explain the important role of open education and uh, open education resources to other stakeholders at your institution, check out the annual toolkit on open education benefits on Zenodo. There you will find good practices and materials developed and translated by other academic libraries. Due to their extensive subject expertise and a leading role in open science, open access, open education, and supporting teachers and learners, libraries are well positioned when it comes to advocating for open education and OER within and across academic institutions. Use your expertise in this area, listen to the needs of your students and teachers, be supportive, and take the needs of your open education community into account when advocating for the development of open education policies. Finally, if you see that uh, OE policy solutions are not enough, widen your scope and look at other policy areas that might benefit from the inclusion of OER and OE practices. In them, think about your institution's policy on recognitions and rewards or a policy on inclusion and diversity, for example, and suggest to your institutional policymakers how open education could support these goals. This was a closer look at the second area of action, developing supportive policy and recommendations to academic libraries for implementing it. Libraries are important partners in the area of policymaking, and it is important that they continue to advocate for and participate in the development of institutional and national regulatory frameworks, supportive of effective open education practices. Thank you for listening to the fifth Open Education Bite. The next two bites will explore other remaining areas of action of the UNESCO recommendation on open educational resources. Stay tuned. Stay tuned.